We often understand meditation as an exercise in learning how to stop thinking. But that's not really the case. Meditation is an exercise in learning when to think, having a sense of time and place for your thinking, and learning to develop the sensitivity to tell when that time and place is. For instance, when you settle down here to stay with the breath, sometimes you find the mind settles with the breath very easily. They seem to fit. There's very little problem. Direct the mind to the breath, and it settles down. Other times, though, it won't settle down. You've got other issues going on. So the first question you have to ask yourself when you find this happening is, what's going on in the mind? What attitudes, what ideas left over from the course of the day are getting in the way right now. Sometimes you find there's residual anger, sometimes there's discouragement, sometimes it's general frustration, sometimes restlessness. So the first question then is how to deal with these factors. In some cases you have there are specific meditation exercises. Recollection of the Sangha is good for when you're getting discouraged. Think of all those stories in the Terry and Terragata about people who've been frustrated in their meditation. There's one about a monk who had been ordained 20 years and still had no, no peace of mind. And yet he was able to get past that obstacle. So it gives you encouragement. You realize, well, he could do it, I can do it. And my frustration is nothing compared to his. So that kind of thinking helps give you perspective. If there's lust, well, we have the 32 parts of the body. Anger, we've got thoughts of goodwill. Restlessness is a little, requires not so much a thinking exercise as it does a way of calming down that energy, or at least putting that energy to use. In other words, if you find your mind all over the place, just a lot of nervous energy. You say, okay, if it wants to think, give it something to think about. You can go through the body. You can go through the bones, for example, starting with the joints of your fingers up through your hands, el wrists, forearms, elbows, up to the shoulders, and then starting with the joints of the toes up through the foot, all the way up to the skull. And you go through the body as many times like this as you find necessary. Not only visualizing the bones, but also asking yourself, where right now is that particular bone? In other words, when you're thinking about the joints in your fingers, well, think about the sensation in your fingers right now. And if you feel any tension or tightness, you realize that's not a bone feeling. The bones don't have any tension or tightness, that's just the muscles around the bones, so you relax them. You go through the body this way, a very systematic way of relaxing all the different patches of tension in the body. So at the same time that you're taking that energy and putting it to use, you're also learning how to relax the energy, the nervous part of the energy. So the mind finds it easier and easier to settle down. Then it can finally settle down with the breath when it's had enough of this thinking. In other words, the first step when you sit down to meditate is if the mind doesn't want to settle down easily with the object, is to figure out why and figure out an antidote. And you know the antidote has worked when the mind finally does get willing to settle down. Then once you're with the breath, and those questions we talked about the other day, exactly what sensations in the body are breath? How does the body relate to the breath? Or where does the in-breath begin? How can you tell what, which breath is comfortable, which one is not? What are your standards for comfort? Again, you ask these questions when you find that the mind is having trouble settling down. If it's finding it easy to settle down, the only question is, okay, how much stillness do you need? How much stillness is right concentration? When do you reach the point where you've gone beyond right concentration, lose your mindfulness, and everything blanks out? In other words,
moments, there's a minimal amount of thinking involved there, just enough to make sure that you're alert. Otherwise, you don't want to analyze things too much because you'll destroy it. So you see that there's a time and a place for thinking. And the question is learning how to get a, a sense of what that time and place is. And this is something that can be gained only through observation. In fact, one of the purposes of the meditation is to develop just that sensitivity. And the reason for this is you're trying to learn how to think in terms of the Four Noble Truths. When the Buddha talked about appropriate attention, he defined it in terms of the Four Noble Truths, learning to see, okay, where is stress, where is the cause, where is the cessation of stress, and what am I doing that's helping to keep stress? Stress stop, help, help the stress stop. So the question should be aimed in that direction, and, and you use those standards to judge the answers you get, judge the results you get. And the answers not only are verbal answers many times, it's a state of mind you've got developed here. I mean, we're dealing with realities. When they talk about noble truths, it's not just words about stress and suffering, you're dealing with the actual sensation. The same goes with the path. It's not just thoughts about the path, it's the actual experience of the mind in concentration, learning to recognize what that is, and getting a sense of when your energy is too much and when your energy is not enough. So the Four Noble Truths function in two ways here, one in sparking your questions, and then Secondly, in judging the answers or judging the results that you get. And as your mind goes to the various levels of concentration and begins to get more subtle insight into these questions, the Four Noble Truths just continue as your standards. It's just that your understanding of them, your sensitivity to, towards them, gets more and more refined. But the basic framework is always the same. Some people find it easy to think in these terms. Other people find their minds tend to go off in other terms, getting into more metaphysical issues, more abstract issues. That's when you realize your thinking has gone off the deep end. It's un unskillful thinking for that particular time. Keep coming back to the issue, okay, is there stress right now? What can I do to eliminate the stress that I'm conscious of? And that means, what am I doing to create that stress? How can I learn to stop? Those are the questions that come from the Noble Truths. And then when you get an answer, okay, check it against the Noble Truths. Has the stress actually gotten less? Are your powers of concentration stronger? Is your mindfulness stronger? Is your discernment sharper? If so, you're headed in the right direction. And you're getting more and more skillful in your thinking. A lot of us don't like to hear this. We like to think, well, my skill, my, I'm pretty good at thinking things through. All I need to do now is to learn how not to think. And with some people that is the case. They do have a tendency to analyze things very skillfully, and all they need is the stillness of mind that enables that insight to go deeper. But for most of us, it also means learning how to think in new ways, getting a better sense of which thinking is really counterproductive, which thinking is helpful. And the meditation provides us with the, the time and the space to really watch, to get a sense of cause and effect in our thinking. We learn to see thinking as the Buddha saw it, as an act, part of a causal chain. Where does this thought come from? Where is it going? Instead of getting carried away with thoughts that are really mind-blowing or new, because sometimes new thoughts are good, sometimes they're not helpful. You have to be very careful about them.
that we're learning to use our thinking process as part of a skill. So when the time comes that we've thought our way to a good, still place in the mind, we can stop thinking. Stay with that stillness for a while. Then when we've had enough, then you can see, okay, what new perspective does that stillness give you on the question of suffering and stress? In this way, your stillness and your thinking help each other along. John Lee makes the comparison to a right and a left foot. You need both to walk. Kina Nayon talks about two hands washing each other. You can't have one hand just washing itself. It takes the right hand to wash the left hand, the left hand to wash the right one. And you've got when you've got the proper balance, okay, they both get clean. <laughs>